Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Redux. You are watching episode 2, Selection Sort. Selection Sort, the first sorting algorithm we're going to cover in this series. Now the reason why I chose to start off with Selection Sort is because it is the most intuitive sorting algorithm. If I were to give you a deck of cards, the way you would sort them is probably something along the lines of selection sort. So hopefully by appealing to the intuition, we can make learning this sorting algorithm easier. The premise behind selection sort is really simple. Basically what we want to do is to have a pass through a list. We want to find the smallest element and we want to slot it to the left of the list. Then we will construct a new sublist that excludes the already sorted elements. That way, every pass will pick out the smallest item within whatever's left in the list and put it in front. In fact, just based on this description, you should have a pretty good picture on how this sorting algorithm works, but I'm gonna go ahead and trace it for you anyway. So here is our unsorted list. Now, one important thing to note is how we're gonna actually find a minimum element within this list. What we will need is a variable outside of the original list which actually keeps track of what is the minimum and counted value. So what's going to happen is, I'm going to make a pass through the list and find the smallest item. I'm going to put the first digit as the minimum first, and as I move on, if I see a smaller number, I'll go ahead and take note of that, because then we know that that element is actually smaller. By doing this throughout the entire list, we'll be able to find the smallest element. Once we've found the minimum element, what we're going to do is we're going to actually swap this with the element in the first position. Since that is exactly how we want the list to be sorted, that is smallest on the left and largest on the right, the smallest element, which has now been put into the leftmost position, can be considered sorted. I'm going to go ahead and mark that card blue for clarity. So we're going to have to do the exact same thing, except that we're going to exclude the card that has already been sorted. So for the remaining unsorted sublist, we're going to make a pass through it to find the smallest element. Once we've found that, we're going to swap it to the front again. I think you can kind of see where this is going now. Rinse and repeat, and that will make the unsorted sublist smaller and smaller. Let us continue tracing the algorithm and see how it eventually sorts the entire list. Eventually, the size of the unsorted sublist goes to zero, and we have a sorted list. So let's talk about time. How efficient is selection sort? Unfortunately, selection sort is a very simple algorithm, so its time complexity is actually n squared. Take a look at how selection sort behaves. It's going to run through the list again and again, as many times as there are items in the list, because for every pass through the list, one item is sorted. Since selection sort makes n comparisons n times, its time complexity is n squared. Now, unfortunately, because of the way selection sort works, we are unable to actually optimize it within the algorithm. Don't worry if you don't fully understand what I mean. All you need to know at this point of time is that for selection sort, whatever data you give it, it is going to make the exact same amount of comparisons. That means that even if you give selection sort a sorted list, there is no way within the algorithm can it find out that the list is in fact sorted. In the future, when we look at other sorting algorithms, you will notice that some of them are actually able to terminate early if a list is already sorted. Unfortunately, the way selection sort is implemented does not lend itself to that. Hence, the average case, best case, and worst case time complexity of selection sort is still n squared. That's about all there is for this episode of Sorting Algorithms Redux. Just a little note for viewers who came from my old video. In that video, what I did was I actually did selection sort in two arrays. So from the unsorted array, I will pick out the smallest item and put it in a new array. Now, there was some debate as to whether or not that is correct. And in general, the consensus is that is not the optimal way to do selection sort. The whole point of selection sort is that it does not create another array and it works within the array itself. So this is something worth noting if you came from my older video. What I've shared with you in this video is probably more accurate. But this wraps it up for this episode of Sorting Algorithms Redux. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you are watching 0612TV.